So let's get started. Welcome to the GIS uh, tutorial, uh, which is the last afternoon for the tutorials. Um, so uh, let me introduce you to Kelsey Jordan. Uh, he has a PhD in marine geophysics uh, from uh, MIT, uh, and he has been working a lot with geographical and geophysical uh, data sets. Uh, he has been since then a, a, a developer, a scientific developer at Enthod, also a trainer. Uh, and uh, uh, as such, he has been developing a lot of large-scale scientific applications, and we'll now learn about uh, GIS and how to do that in Python. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, you may know that uh, Nthought is based in Austin here, uh, but I am based in New York, so it's a rare thing for me to be in Austin. It was nice to be in the office yesterday, and it's nice to be here. Uh, so we are going to be working with geospatial data in Python. Uh, let me just do a little bit of introductory stuff before we go on uh, too much farther. So here I'll mention again, these are the links for the data exercises, examples, and for the slides that I'm showing now. So you should be able to, to clone the data and examples repository and you should be able to follow along on the slides if you like. All right, how many people have the uh, data and exercises cloned already on your, on your local machine? How many people are working on it now? Okay. Okay. Um, first, I'd, I'd like to get a little bit of a sense of who's in the room. I have a feeling there might be a few ringers here who uh, know some more than I do about some of these topics. Um, and uh, maybe there are some people who haven't done any of this before. Uh, there are people who have experience with data but not Python. And I think we've got a, a number of different um, backgrounds in the room at this time. So just generally, how many people have used any of the packages that were required for this tutorial? Basemap, Shapely, GDAL, so some, yeah, so, so maybe a third of the room has, has used at least one of these packages before. Um, how many people would say you work a lot with geographic data, whether in Python or not? Um, okay. And of those people, what fields? Are we science, industry, web mapping? What, what kinds of backgrounds do we have? Meteorology, Meteorology? okay. Meteorology? Social science. Social science, okay. Oceanography? Seismology. Seismology? Fire okay. Science. Fire science, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, good. And now for, for Python background, um, this, is an, this tutorial was aimed at an intermediate level here, which means I've assumed generally familiarity with Python, using IPython at the command prompt, um, and uh, NumPy and basic scientific Python tools. So how many people would say that you're generally at that level, familiar with IPython and NumPy and, and you know, using Python interactively? Okay, so most people. How many people would say you're not all that comfortable with all of those things? Is anybody? Uh, okay, so not, not too many people are fessing up to that, but a few. Okay, that's, a, that's all right. Um, so one thing I'd just like to encourage when we do the exercises, I'll mention this again, but um, I'd like you to sort of work with your neighbors and, and help each other with people with different backgrounds. You know, maybe one person knows more about the, uh, running the Python script from an IPython shell and, and someone else will know more about the, the data tools and things like that. So, um, so working with the people around you can be helpful for the exercises. So we'll try to do that when we can. Okay, uh, so we will uh, test some of this when we get to our first real exercise, but uh, I hope you'll be able to follow along some of the things as we go as well. Let me talk a little bit about what we're going to cover. So the emphasis of this tutorial uh, is we're going to talk about, for the most part, open source tools using geospatial data in Python. Uh, that will include Python inter interfaces to some major libraries that are written in other languages, compiled languages like C++. I'll have a special emphasis on Pythonic 
tools for working with geospatial data. So the emphasis will be things that are natural for Python programmers, for people who like working in a Python environment to use to interact with, with their data. And there's a few very good tools for that. Uh, and also, another thing we're interested in is interfacing with NumPy and uh, the rest of the scientific Python stack that you'll be able to get your data and analyze it the way you might be used to in other tools uh, within uh, Python. And then we'll have a number of hands-on exercises and you should be able to work the examples as well as we go. There are a lot of things that you might think of under the scope of geospatial data that we're not going to be covering for the most part. Uh, we're not going to do much with analysis. We'll just do some very, very <laughs> basic things. Uh, there are so many tools that do geospatial analysis, um, uh, GIS packages, and, and also some uh, interesting Python tools. Uh, but we, we're not going to have time to cover those. I'm not going to talk except just in passing about the web mapping world. There's a lot of interesting things going on uh, interfacing with web browsers and, and JavaScript. Um, I'll just show a couple examples of that at the end, but, but for the most part, we're not going to deal with, with that side of things. And also, we'll only mention in passing, interfacing with the GIS desktop applications, uh, ArcGIS, the major uh, commercial player, and QGIS, uh, an open source uh, tool. Uh, I'll show you an example of QGIS and sort of mention ArcGIS in passing, but that's about the, the scope that we'll do on those things. So then, let me show you the topics uh, that we will do specifically. Uh, we'll start out with map, map projections, talk a little bit about PyProj, uh, map projection tool, and base map for actually plotting things on map projections. We'll talk about the Python bindings for the GDAL and OGR libraries. Uh, we will read vector data and interact with it a bit uh, with Fiona. We'll act on some geometry objects with Shapely. And then we'll touch on a few of these other things that I mentioned, but not uh, in a very detailed way with the exercises. Okay? All right, so let's start with map projections. So when we're dealing with geographic data, I'm sure everyone's all aware of this, you're dealing with some reference to the, the data in the world. So most people who think about geographic data are just thinking about, well, you've got a latitude and longitude and that places it somewhere on the earth. Um, and that's true. Uh, and, but even, even in that sense, we need to have the reference system that that's referring to. What ellipsoid are you using? What datum? Uh, the standard for most of that is called WGS84. That's what almost everything uses for latitude and longitude reference now, and that's what we'll, we'll use. Uh, but these tools we'll talk about can translate between that coordinate system and, and any others, projected or just different uh, reference points. Uh, so let me, let me talk a little bit about just the importance of using map projections when you're showing your data. So I'm sure everyone's seen a map like this, right? What is, what is wrong with this picture? And, for those of you from the U.S. here, you probably uh, see something funny about this. It, shapes distorted. The shape's distorted. <laughs> Texas is right, <laughs> more or less. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's right. Yeah. So the sizes aren't proportional and the shapes aren't right. Both of those are, are true. So, so this is a map that doesn't, doesn't deal correctly with either area or shape. Uh, so what, what projection is this? Anybody? It's not a Mercator. It's, yeah, so it's, it's, it's uh, Platte-Carré, which is the cylindrical projection. Some people call it unprojected coordinates. This is plotting longitude is x and latitude is y, right? So this is you get your, your longitude latitude points and you just plot x, y. This is what you get. Okay, so if you're plotting your data, you know, just latitude, you know, longitude versus latitude, uh, 
your data look like this. And that you know, distorts things in various ways. If you're okay with that, that's fine. Just you really shouldn't do that without understanding the, the full implications of it. And even for small areas, th there are problems with that. So we can put things on a projection. Now this is a Mercator projection, right, which most people are probably familiar with. It's also a cylindrical projection, which means north is always up everywhere um, on the map. Um, what's wrong with this map? Yeah, so areas are distorted. So the Mercator projection uh, increases area the farther away from the equator you are, right, on, for things that are projected in it. So look at the relative sizes of Minnesota and Texas, right? So on this map, Minnesota is nearly as large as Texas, right, when in reality it's, you know, less than half the size, I think, something like that. Uh, now, that's not to say that Mercator is a terrible projection. It has some nice properties. What are the nice properties of Mercator projections? Directions, Directions are true. That's, that's a really nice one. So it's, it's long been preferred for navigators because locally a direction called a rum line, a direct line of sight on your compass, will actually take you the right direction that's on the map. Right? So, so directions are locally true. So not just north and north, south, east, and west, but any direction on your compass is locally true. Um, there's another nice property that a Mercator projection has. Yeah, shape is preserved, at least locally, right? So it's called conformal. The, the property of the map um, that preserves shape locally is conformal. That, that means the shape of Minnesota is as correct as the shape of Texas. Um, even though their areas relatively are incorrect. Now, that's only true locally, so the larger an area you're talking about, uh, the, the less true that is. But if you're doing a Mercator map of, say, a single county in Texas, it gets more and more accurate uh, doing it that way. So you might worry about scales, but, but uh, locally the shape is OK. Yeah? You still pull up full map? Uh, Yes, it, well, it has to be. Uh, conformal is only local. It, it means it conforms locally, right? So, the, so there's, no, there's no projection that can be globally conformal, right? Because it, had to be, it would have to be on the sphere or on the ellipsoid, right? So, so conformal means it's locally preserving shapes. OK, so that's, that's the, the first basic uh, change we can do. Uh, now, this is probably a much more familiar map of the US. And this, anybody know what projection this would be? Lambert. Yeah, it's a Lambert projection. Uh, this is also a conformal projection, uh, but now it's projected onto a cone rather than a cylinder. Um, and there are uh, two lines of longitude that are chosen for true scale, and the farther you get from those two lines of longitude, the, uh, the more it diverges from, from true scale. Um, but on the, on the scale of the United States, that's not too bad. This is a pretty reasonable approximation. Uh, now you could take a, a similar uh, area-preserving map of the U.S. Now this preserves areas of the states. Right. So here, what's the difference between these two? A little bit. But you can see they're not, they're not too far off on this scale. All right, so there are various trade-offs you make. Now, anytime you're dealing with geospatial data, you have to deal with these projections one way or another. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how we, how we do that. Um, now, of course, you might think the true thing to do is put it on a sphere. Uh, that's not quite true, uh, because really the reference shape of the Earth is an ellipsoid, which is about one part in 200 out of round, um, and that, uh, that ellipsoid is what's referenced in these uh, geographic uh, reference systems. So this is a quote that I like from Isaac Asimov about the difference between uh, a flat map of the Earth and a spherical map of the Earth, and relative to the difference between a, 
an ellipsoidal map of the Earth and a spherical map of the Earth. When people thought the Earth was flat, they were wrong. When people thought the Earth was spherical, they were wrong. But if you think that thinking the Earth is spherical is just as wrong as thinking the Earth is flat, then your view is wronger than both of them put together. Um, so you can get pretty close to most of these projections just assuming the Earth is a sphere. Uh, but if you're using these packages, we're actually using the full ellipsoid calculations. You know, if you were going to write your own, uh, your own uh, trigonometric functions to calculate the great circle distance between points on the Earth, it would be a lot easier to do that in spherical geometry, and you would only be off by a few tenths of a percent in general. Right? So uh, depending on what you're doing, that might be fine. Uh, but you know, to do it properly to the best precision that you have, these tools we're going to talk about uh, generally do that. All right, so another um, point when we're talking about projections, talking about uh, working with uh, this kind of data, uh, is that any kind of geographic data you have should be referred to a, a spatial reference system, some kind of reference for what coordinate system you're using. Uh, so some of those common ones, I mentioned the WGS84, point here, WGS84 coordinate system, which is our current latitude and longitude system reference to this particular ellipsoid of the Earth. This is what all uh, GPS receivers are giving you uh, reference to this. And, and this has a code. This is for the European Petroleum Society of Geophysicists or something like that, um, that, uh, that have codified many of these projections to numbers, and this is EPSG 4326. Uh, this refers to this particular coordinate system. Yeah? Do these different coordinate systems imply different latitudes and longitudes for a given point, or what are different distances between them? Uh, they may, they may uh, imply different latitude and longitude for a given point. So, for example, in, within the U.S., the, the two different uh, latitude and longitude reference systems you might see are, are NAD27 and NAD83. Uh, NAD83 is essentially the same as WGS84, uh, within the continental U.S. at least. I think it's identical. Uh, but an older reference system that uses, used uh, an ellipsoid that was defined in 1866 uh, was the basis for the 1927 coordinates and actually looking at a point in the U.S. in the two different coordinate systems, the difference, differences can be up to a couple hundred meters. So you do have to be aware, if you're, if you're talking about that kind of precision, you have to be aware uh, of those kinds of differences. And, and you care about the absolute uh, values rather than just relative values. If you're, if you're doing relative values, it probably won't make much difference but, you know, for a local area. Uh, but if you're doing absolute values of a, of a place, it does. It does make a difference. And so a lot of uh, USGS data, you know, before the mid-'80s would, would have all been referenced in, in NAD uh, 27, the North, at North America datum of 1927. Right, so you do have to be careful about that. And other parts of the world have other reference systems, and, and you have the same kinds of issues. Uh, simple. Um, if you had to write it yourself, you, uh, not necessarily, but, um, but there are tools that make that easy and, and those are built into almost all of these tools that we'll talk about today. Right? So, so doing that kind of, that's called a datum transformation. So in the case where it's just one latitude and longitude system to another latitude and longitude system, just changing the ellipsoid and the, and the parameters of it, uh, that's a datum shift and, and proj, pi proj and the proj4 library that it's uh, um, based on can do that kind of shift for you. Yeah. Um, okay, and then all, uh, well, I shouldn't say all, but many, many, many uh, projections have their reference systems to go along with them. For example, the, the Google Maps interface is a version of a Mercator projection. It is actually a spherical mer Mercator, not an ellipsoidal Mercator, right? So they have... Uh, uh, taken Isaac Asimov's advice and not bothered with the ellipsoidal part and just done, done the trigonometry uh, as a sphere and calculate the, the scale of the Mercator projection according to a spherical Earth. And that bothers a lot of cartographers, but if you're just, you know, getting driving directions to Grandma's house, it isn't going to matter at all, um, and that's fine. Uh, the, the 
EPSG reference numbers for the Google spherical Mercator projection are uh, 900913, which is a pretty funny number. Does anybody know why it's that number? It spells Google on an old-fashioned calculator, right? That's like, um, so, so that was basically they made up a number because EPSG wouldn't give them a number for some amount of time. So they, they uh, I don't think it was Google that did this, but you know, someone, someone uh, made up the number that they could use. And eventually they, had, they got assigned the number 3857, but, but they're both still used by uh, various applications. And then just another example. Uh, now this, this is a coordinate system that doesn't have an EPSG reference number that I know of. It may have one. Uh, but here's an ESRI reference number uh, that uh, is 102718. That's a North American datum of 1983, State Plain, New York, Long Island, uh, in feet. Um, and I pick out that uh, sort of complicated sounding projection because uh, uh, some of the data that we use that I have in the repo are in that projection, right? So the, the data for New York City are all based on that, that particular projection. Okay, so um, enough with the preliminaries. Let's uh, look at some Python. So here we have a snippet of Python code. Uh, this is actually using the PyProj library. So here's an import. And if you've got an open uh, IPython window, go ahead and follow along here. Uh, from PyProj import capital PProj. And now we can generate a, an instance of this projection, of a projection, with these parameters. Uh, so here, p equals proj init equals this string, and this is uh, the Google spherical mercator, EPSG colon 3857. Um, and now that instance has an attribute, SRS, that refers to that spatial reference system. So any, any instance of uh, one of these proj projections will have a spatial reference system attached to it, and you can just look at it. Uh, that might be a reference to a number like this, but it might be the complicated parameters that went into making that. You can do arbitrary projections and, and choose your own parameters uh, within the proj definition. How many people in the room have actually used the proj interface, like from the command line and things like that? So, so some number of people, yeah. So, so that you should be familiar with, that, that sort of odd syntax of uh, using the, the proj parameters. Okay, so now uh, we can actually use that instance of this projection to, to do forward and inverse map transformations. So here we're going to take a point, um, and that ha point has longitude and latitude. I should say we're almost always doing longitude, latitude, uh, instead of latitude, longitude, uh, because longitude is the x-coordinate and latitude is the y-coordinate, so I'll try to be consistent about that. So here a point of minus 97.75 longitude, that's west longitude, and 30.25 latitude uh, projects to this point on the spherical mercator in meters. All right. Does anybody know what that point is? It's Austin, yeah. So, or at least you know, some part of Austin. Um, so now we, these are the coordinates in meters, and, and the x and y coordinates in, in map projections are often called um, easting and northing for x and y. Right? So if you're talking about the, the map uh, projected coordinates, sometimes you'll, you'll hear people say easting and northing. I'll generally use x and y. Uh, and now we can do the inverse transformation of those same points back into a map projection. Right? And we can see that that works. Um, and then you can also do um, transformations between two arbitrary different systems, and that there's a, a function that you can import from PyProj called transform, and you could transform coordinates from one spatial reference system to another without having to go through an intermediate of, of uh, uh, latitude and longitude here. Okay, how many people have PyProj working? That mostly work? Good, okay. All right, so we'll, we'll use PyProj a little bit in, in the exercises, but I don't have a specific exercise for it. So let's, let's go on and we'll talk about uh, using base map to plot things on a map. So th these are images from the base map gallery. Base map is a tool that's built on top of Matplotlib, the 
most common plotting library in the scientific Python world. Uh, and this base map uses matplotlib to generate these maps and you can uh, interact with it in, in the same kinds of ways you do with other matplotlib plots and, and so on. Um, all of these examples here, let me just see if this link works here. Um, all of these examples are in the, the uh, example gallery. Is that image, if you've got the, the slides up on your machine, you should be able to just click that link and this example gallery will come up. And this is on the base map website and has code for every one of these examples. Um, some of these are pulling data off of uh, websites, and you can generate all those. So you can see, let's just take a look at, at one of these examples. Um, so here, um, let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, if I can, there we go. So this is where you generate a new instance of your base map here. Uh, so. So we create an instance of, of base map and we give it certain parameters. Uh, these are the bounds for the, for the map window and the, the name of the projection and a few other parameters you can give it. And then you act on that instance to do things. And there are methods on that uh, to draw the coastlines, draw the countries, uh, fill continents and draw grid lines and so on. Uh, so using that, uh, that instance to, to do actions. Okay, and now I don't know how to... There we go. Yeah. All right. All right, so let me show you a specific example. This is a, a heat map of all the tweets that were geolocated within some one week span or so um, last month uh, within a box near New York City that includes all of New York City. Uh, and I generated this with, with Basemap. Um, and the data for this are in the, the GitHub repository. So if you take a look, I'm going to switch applications now. So let me go. There we go. All right, so here's the code. Is that big enough? Do we need to go a little bigger? It should be good, except we don't run over the side here. All right, well, you can see that. Okay. So here is uh, the code. We've got some initial imports here. Uh, here, I've just hard-coded the number of tweets so we can allocate the, the size of the array. Um, this is just a little bit of magic to fi try to find the right data directory. Um, I'm, I heard uh, at least one report that I wasn't working for someone else. So if this <laughs> script doesn't run for you, you might check this this data directory and make sure that this points to where the data actually live in the cloned repository uh, that you've got. And then, here we load the data. So now I'm loading the data into a NumPy array of, uh, of x and y of longitude and latitude variable uh, um, values. Um, and it's just as a mem memory mapped array of the binary file on disk. Right? So if you've done much with uh, NumPy, you'll probably re recognize this. So now, now tweets is just a memory mapped NumPy array that you can act on. And tweets lon is referencing the longitude component. Tweets lat is referencing the latitude component. So here we just generate a new instance of base map with these parameters. Here it's a Mercator projection. We got south, north, west, and east boundaries. Uh, the, this is the latitude at which scale is true. We just pick that to be the south boundary. You could put it halfway between north and south if you like, but it's not going to matter too much on this scale. And the resolution here, we're just going to say use the intermediate resolution data files. Okay, so now I set 
x and y to the arrays for the longitude and latitude, respectively. And I'm binning those data. This is using hex bin. This is a, um, a spatial histogram uh, that's, that's built into matplotlib and uh, base map. Okay, so is everyone able to run this script? Does this work for people? Yes, yes, some. How many people does it not work for? And one or two, how many people haven't tried it? <laughs> okay, so if you could uh, try and see if this, this works, that'll, that'll help for the next uh, exercise, but we'll get there pretty shortly. Uh, so at this point, any, any questions? Yeah. Well, you can, uh, I forget what the, there's a, another, HIST2D, I think, is the other, is the other one. And that, those are just square bins, right? Or rectangular bins. HIST2D basically yeah. is a way to visualize density of data, in a sense. Right, but a square histogram would do that as well. Right, it's right, just, square. yeah. HIST2D, yeah. hexagonal, yeah, so exactly. it kind of fits in a little better. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think the point is that all the neighbors have the same distance. And where with a square, uh, a square grid, you, the diagonals are, are farther away, right? So that, you know, that's, I think that's the argument for it. But obviously you could do that either way. All right. Okay, well, here's an actual map that was uh, published on a website recently, uh, a few days ago. Um, on the Sky News web, uh, website. Uh, this is, well, first of all, our Mercator map of the world. Uh, a lot of people are aware the Mercator projection isn't the greatest projection for a map of the world. But even if you use a Mercator projection, you still don't fly from Hawaii to Hong Kong via South Africa, right? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, so this was a little bit humorous. Um, Another, another version that was published in another website. Uh, still went the same way because that's the way their projection was, uh, although this time they flew over Spain. Um, but at least the other, the other lines are more like great circles, right? Um, but now we have an exercise that we're going to, we're going to try to do uh, better than this. So we'll, we'll do a number of things. We'll, we'll do some global projections first, and then we'll actually plot great circles that correspond to those points. So now I'd like you to go to, in this cloned repository, the exercises, and this is the, it's called base map EX, just to, so there's no namespace collision with any other base map here. Uh, base map EX um, is this exercise. So there are, there are two parts. Um, the first part has A, B, C, and D to do these different projections, and the second part is plotting the great circles. So part one is to draw a world map centered on Austin, Texas, if possible, in the following projections. Uh, a Mercator projection, a Robinson projection, an orthographic projection, and azimuthal equidistant projection. Okay? Um, and now you're going to need some reference for this, and the, the base map website is one way to do it, or the base map um, help string may be enough as well. Do I have base map? Oh, base exception. So if I, if I ask for help at the command line here, I'm just going to do this import from mpl underscore toolkits dot base map import capital B base map. Now, base map question mark will give me, in any IPython prompt, will give me some, uh, some help on this. So, and that tells you the basic parameters that you can use to create an instance here. So here, first, the list of all the different projections that are available. Right, so those are all keyed by that value um, on the left. That's the name of the projection and a short description of it. And then the other keyword parameters for the uh, corners of the area. Uh, for a global map, you won't need these. And other, other keyword parameters that are available. So you can see all that help in any IPython window, you can, you can look through all that. And, or if you prefer, you can go to the base map uh, website and, and look at the help there. All right, so, so your task is to create those four 
uh, maps. And then the, the final task is to create one map in a projection of your choosing and draw these four great circle paths. One path from Hawaii to Hong Kong, one from Hong Kong to Moscow, one from Moscow to Havana, Cuba, one from Havana to Quito, Ecuador. Um, and the, the coordinates for all those places are, are already defined for you, so you don't have to go look them up like I did. Um, okay, so uh, here I'll, I'll give you a few minutes uh, to try out this exercise, try to, uh, to make these maps, and I'll come around and, and help you here. <laughs> 